So I'm going to have a look at this today. Uh, it's a Starrett number 657 dial gauge stand or um, DTI stand. It's a magnetic one and it should work by pushing that through to switch the magnet on and off. Um, it's one of the better ones because it's quite small uh, and it's magnetic on three sides instead of just the cheaper ones which are just magnetic on the bottom. So uh, it came in a job lot of bits and pieces. Um, and I've just kind of slung it in a drawer ever since because it's just completely seized up But I thought we'd have a look and see what we can see. I've never had one of these apart before so I really don't know what I'm going to come across uh, It has seen better days to be fair uh, I can only see one way in Which is a screw. I'm guessing this might thread out um, I Don't think there'd be anything under that, but that looks like it's riveted on Hmm well, let's get into it and have a look. So we'll start by getting that screw out. But that's going to be seized. Let's give it a go. Blinky neck. Oh. Well, actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought. That's like a little... A bit of a coarse thread. So what have we got in there? Well to be fair that looks like a blind hole. I don't know if you can see properly but that looks just like a, a blind hole in there. So quite what that does I've no idea. Let's try and get some, let's try and get a wrench on that. See if we can use it. Nipex Cobras on it, I think. Well, I would guess it's clockwise. Maybe it isn't. Look at that. As if it weren't bad enough before. I've just taken a blinking chunk out of it. Uh, right, I'm going to get in a vise with some soft jaws um, and I'll see if I can tap it loose. I'll be back in a second. Right, I'm back. Uh, it wasn't actually that seized either, so let's have a look what's under there. Hi, man. All right, okay, so that's in a blind hole as well. So we've got two blind holes and no way in, unless there's something under that. Let's have a look. Thing is, if I get this off, I'll probably never get it back on again. I mean, yeah. Well, I'll figure out how to get that back on later. At the minute, it does absolutely no use whatsoever, so let's get it off. I'd like that to go back on, though, because obviously that's part of it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So this... Oh, hang on, we've got that moving now. Oh, hey, hey, up. Oh. Right, let's just give that a wipe. Right, let's just undo that then. Maybe that'll poke through now. Yeah, here we go. Don't seem to be any loose springs or anything in there. Okay. To be fair, it smells quite oily. I think it's been, been well loved and well loose, well used. So there is something loose in there actually. Let's just see if we can get any movement on that. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Excuse the lack of circular pliers. Like I say, I've never had one of these apart, so I really don't know what, what to expect in here. I'll, t I'll tell you what, let's go for the circle of pliers. I'm going to find the circle of pliers. Right, here we go. I mean, I'm 
guessing there's a magnet in here, but other than that, no idea. Right. That just pushes through there, or is that the magnet in there? Maybe that's actually the magnet. Does that move? It does not move. I have a feeling, you know, that... Well, yeah, it must be the magnet, because if that pushes on it, it's got to push that to and fro. So I need to unseize that, then. Let's give that a little tappity tap. movement it's coming trying to do these sorts of things not on camera we should have to hold the camera and do everything in an awkward way but i just thought let's get it out together right something's going on there we go so we've got a magnetic cap, which is obviously designed to go in one way only. And then that must be the magnet under there, I guess. Looks in reasonable condition. And something going on in there. Right, okay, there's a there's some sort of collar or something in there. Right, let's keep tapping. Let's get the thing out. Oh, there we go. No, no need to tap. So I'm going to stick that on the side of that so I know which way it comes out. So that's the magnet. And that must just be a plate, but I don't know if you can see in there, but it's ever so gungy. So I think once we've cleaned that out, we should have quite a nice little... And I start working a bit of kit. So I might just scrape that. Let's give that a bit of a scraperoo. A bit of a wiperoo. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, that should go out. Let's try tapping it back in. See what happens when we tap the thing back in. Yeah, it goes in all right. Yeah, it's a bit gunky in there. Let's scrape out and wipe out. Right, so that's the bottom. That's the bottom of the magnet. So we've got a cap. Let's have a look. So we've got a cap. That goes on there. That goes on there. That pushes in and out in here. So I think what I'll do, I'll give all this a good clean up. And you'll see, it might just go back together. I think it was actually just seized up. Um, what I will be tempted to do is just clean up, well, that's going on a bit, just clean that up with a Swiss file just to, uh, just to kind of make it a bit nicer because somebody's been cracking that with a hammer. I'm guessing that's brass chrome plated, so it's not very hard. 
and it's um, it's kind of mushroomed out on the end. Yeah, that one's the same. So I'll give them a bit of a clean up. We'll lose the chrome, but at least we'll have a working bit of kit again. Um, I'll clean that up. I suspect that was probably just riveted on. I might be able to get those rivets out. If I can, I'll be able to just rivet it back on. But I'll clean it up. We'll come back and we'll see what we can do.